In this video, we'll walk you through the installation of ProTaper's revolutionary new self-engaged launch assist, or Sela. Sela is similar in function to other start devices, but there are two key features that make it unlike any other on the market today. First, and most importantly, you can easily engage Sela by yourself. Its unique design makes it possible to practice starts and line up for races with no need for outside assistance. Simply preset the device by turning the dial clockwise until it locks. Then, compress the suspension enough for the device to pass over the ring. When the suspension rebounds, Sela engages by itself. From here, it operates like any other start device, disengaging and retracting when the force compress again, either under braking or when hitting a small bump. Second, Sela is designed to be compatible with a wide range of full-size motocross models. For this reason, it's packaged as a kit with all of the necessary parts and hardware included. Detailed installation instructions specific to your motorcycle are available on our website at protaper.com slash Sela. These instructions will ensure that you assemble your Sela using the correct parts. We'll be installing Sela on a Honda CRF450 today, but the steps will be virtually the same for any bike that Sela is compatible with. The only steps that may differ are the following. Which spacer to use, if any, which receiver to use, and which screw set to use. Before you begin the installation, visit protaper.com slash Sela and download the correct installation instructions and mounting templates for your motorcycle. Print both documents out, making sure that the mounting templates are printed at 100% scale. Start the installation by removing the fork guard on the right side of the bike. Depending on your motorcycle, you may need to remove the front wheel in order to access all of the fork guard bolts. If you need to, refer to your motorcycle service manual for instructions. We strongly recommend that you use an OEM fork guard. If your fork guard has a graphic, remove it during the installation process. Sela's operation is very precise. Variations in fork guard design and the added thickness of a graphic can each potentially cause an interference. There are a few mounting templates available for each motorcycle, each having a different mounting depth. This affects how high Sela sits on the fork guard. Shallow depths, like 100 millimeters, work well when traction is low, like during a concrete start. Greater depths, like 120 millimeters, are better suited to high traction conditions, like grates and tacky soil. Once you've selected your desired depth, verify that you've printed the mounting template at 100% scale by performing the scale check in the upper left corner. Each of the two red lines should measure 50 millimeters in length. If either of these red lines do not pass the scale check, reprint the template, making sure that the proper print settings have been selected. Once you've confirmed the proper scale, begin carefully cutting out the template as indicated, making relief cuts as instructed. For the best result, we recommend the use of a precision knife and cutting mat. With your chosen mounting template neatly cut out, it's time to attach it to the fork guard. To do this, you'll want to use a high quality masking tape. Begin by lining the template up with the fork guard along the top and outside edges. The template should run all the way to the edge of the plastic. When the fit looks good, tape the outside edge down in a few places. Next, pull the template tightly across the fork guard to line it up with the inside edge, being careful not to rip the paper. Again, the template should run all the way to the edge of the plastic. If you need to make adjustments, carefully lift the tape on the outside edge and reposition the template. Confirm that the template lines up with the inside edge and tape it down here as well. Finish with a few more pieces of tape around the template to firmly secure it in place. It's very important that the template fits tightly along the entire outside edge of the fork guard. This will ensure that Sela is mounted precisely and that it will function as intended. With the template firmly secured, we can now mount the aluminum drill guide. Carefully align it with the template. Once in place, tightly secured on all four sides using the same high quality masking tape as before. It's very important that the drill guide is mounted as accurately and firmly as possible. Next, using a 3 16 inch drill bit, drill the three small holes through the drill guide and the fork guard. After this, we'll temporarily install the two 3mm Phillips heads housing screws into the drill guide. These will help to hold the drill guide in place as we drill the large hole. Using the supplied drill bit, drill the large hole, going all the way through the fork guard. Use caution here and take care to start your drilling directly in the center. Now that we've finished drilling, we can remove the drill guide and the template from the fork guard. There may be some burrs left behind from drilling the large hole. Carefully clean these up with a razor blade. Next, using a sharp cutting tool, carefully cut away the fork guard material between the large hole and the smaller one right below it. This is for drainage. 
Using the supplied bit by hand, we'll carefully carve a countersink into the top and bottom holes on the back side of the fork guard. You'll want to do this by hand to avoid taking away too much material or making a bigger hole. Remove just enough material to allow the countersunk washers to sit flush with the back side of the fork guard when installed. Now we're ready to install a cello mechanism to the fork guard. First, we'll do a visual test fit by positioning the device on the outside of the fork guard and lining up the mounting holes. The writing on the front of the device should be oriented upright with the fork guard. Verify that the lip on the back side of the device seats properly within the large hole. Next, add a drop of the provided thread locking fluid to the threads on each of the mounting screws. Using a number two Phillips head screwdriver, mount the cello mechanism to the fork guard. Before fully tightening the screws, check once again that the lip on the back side of the mechanism is properly seated. Then, tighten the screws until they, along with the countersunk washers, are firmly in place and flush with the back side of the fork guard. Before reinstalling the fork guard on your bike, check to make sure that the cello mechanism operates freely and retracts fully. Now we can reinstall the fork guard. We recommend lightly tightening the bolts at first. Make sure that the fork guard is properly positioned, then slowly and evenly bring each of the bolts up to the correct torque specification. If you had to remove your front wheel earlier, refer to your motorcycle service manual for instructions on reinstalling it. Next, we'll tackle the fork ring assembly, which consists of the spacer if necessary, the receiver, the assembly screws, and the fork ring itself. These are the parts we'll be using for our installation today. The parts you'll need for your bike at home may be different. For example, our installation requires the 4.5 millimeter spacer, but your bike may call for a different spacer or no spacer at all. Refer to the installation instructions you printed earlier to make sure that you select the correct components for your application. We'll start our CRF450R fork ring assembly by first removing the fastening system on the back side of the ring. You don't need to fully remove the bolt here, just loosening it will be enough. Next, we'll mate the receiver to the spacer. Note that the notch sides should face one another. Together, these notches form a drainage hole. After this, mate the receiver spacer combination to the ring. Note the orientation of the receiver to the ring. The open ramped end of the ring corresponds to the open V-grooved end of the receiver. A good way to check that these pieces are correctly oriented is to make sure that the markings on the back sides are all upright. If your application does not use a spacer, this step would proceed in much the same way. Next, we'll select the correct assembly screws and apply a drop of thread locking fluid to each. Once we've done that, we're ready to assemble the fork ring. Using the provided 2mm hex tool, evenly tighten all four screws in an X pattern. They should be very snug. Now it's time to install the fork ring. If you have a graphic on your fork tube, we recommend removing it for this step. You can trim and replace the graphic when the installation is complete. The fork ring should be placed low on the fork tube, just above where the tubing begins to expand outward. Once the ring is in place, reinstall the fastening system. The bolt head should be facing out toward you. Lightly snug the bolt by hand for now. This will allow us to make small adjustments to the fork ring without having it rotate freely on the fork. The last major step of the installation is lining up the fork ring with the cello mechanism on the fork guard. Precisely aligning these two components is critical to the safe and reliable function of the system, so we highly recommend taking your time here. There are a few different ways to approach this. In this video, we'll do it by sighting down the fork tube and visually aligning the two components. As you sight down the length of the fork tube, look at the fork ring receiver and the laser etched line on the cella housing. Using this line as a point of reference, fine tune the position of the fork ring until the two components are perfectly aligned. Removing the front number plate can help you gain a clear line of sight down the fork tube, making this process a bit easier. When you've confirmed the alignment, tighten the clamping bolt on the back side of the fork ring using the supplied hex tool. Be careful not to move the ring as you do so. Do not exceed the recommended torque specification of 8 newton meters. With Sela fully installed, test that it's functioning properly by running it through a few cycles. If you encounter any problems, recheck the alignment of the fork ring and perform the test once again. Now you're ready to be a self-starter.